Hi, my name is J.B. Wagner. Thanks for visiting my channel. I'm coming to you with over 50 years of photographic experience that I'd like to share a little bit of. I don't care if you like and I don't care if you subscribe. I'm just doing this for fun. I'm not trying to make any money. And today I'm talking about the Panasonic Lumix GX1. It's a camera that came out in 2012. I'm calling it a vintage digital camera. Maybe that's a new term. Uh, but for me, this was the digital camera that actually got me to, able to transition satisfactorily from film to digital. It's a mirrorless camera, and mirrorless cameras are all the rage today. It was way ahead of its time in several respects back then. And many of the advantages of mirrorless as they're perceived today were already in this camera and others as well. This is a micro four thirds camera, which means it takes lenses from both Panasonic and from Olympus and from a bunch of third party lens manufacturers. So I'd like to get to the conclusion right away, which is might you want to buy this camera? And I'd say you might want to possibly, but it's niche at this point. And I'll explain why really quickly. So the camera body itself sells used on eBay for around $130 to $150. Comes in two colors you can choose from. It's extremely nice build quality. It's all metal. That's one of the selling features is the feel of it. It feels substantial and solid. Um, a problem with the camera is that the over time, the screens on the back uh, dim and become less useful. But even when they were brand new, to me, this camera was only a great camera with this external viewfinder that mounts in the flash shoe called the DMV LVF2. This is a must have, and unfortunately, this costs almost as much as the camera does. So with this, you're gonna be into the camera. If you, you, if you can find one with this on the camera already, you're gonna uh, save money, that's for sure. But it's a, it's a viewfinder that was way ahead of its time. It's very sharp and it's very bright, it has a diopter adjustment, and it also rotates, as you can see here, for angled viewing. It, it's just an essential part of this camera. Now, if you compare this to the G6, which I also did a video of, made by Panasonic Lumix, which is a much newer model, than this, um, that is selling, the body selling for around $200 with a built-in viewfinder that's, I don't think it's quite as good, but it's comparable to this, doesn't rotate. And the camera has more features in terms of speed. This is a very slow camera. It has more video features. This has no microphone jack, and barely does 1080p. You're not buying this for video. You're buying this for photography. This has the same 16 megapixel sensor that that does takes great raw photos, which I develop in DxO Photo Lab, has all the optical corrections, and this camera's more compact um, and feels good in the hand. It has a really nice little hand grip here. It comes with, if it comes with a lens, it came with a kit lens, and it would have been the 14 to 45. There's a 14 to 42 out there, and um, generally, Reviewers like the 14 to 45 better, even though it's older. This lens has optical image stabilization. So you can turn that on and off of the switch here. It's an excellent kit lens and goes really well with this camera and it sells for about a hundred bucks. So it's hard to go wrong with that. Um, if you're into telephoto work, I highly recommend the 45 to 150. It also is much better than you'd expect for arguably a kit telephoto. It's extremely lightweight, and that's one of the advantages of Micro Four Thirds, the small lenses, light lenses. And it has, I believe, image stabilization built in as well, and sells for about $100 used on eBay in great condition. So if you have these two lenses, you're good from 14 to 150 which is the full frame equivalent of 28 to 300. That's a lot of optical coverage. If you want a lens, and again, there's a, a ton of lenses to choose from a Micro Four Thirds, but if you want a compact, super sharp lens for landscapes and 
You don't need it to be too wide. Then this 20 millimeter Panasonic Lumix F1.7 is the way to go. It's, as you can see, quite compact, almost pocketable, or maybe it is depending on the size of your pockets. And it's very sharp. So that's a, a great lens to have as well. The other lens I really love for this camera now is the Brighton Star 35 millimeter 0.95, which is 70 millimeter equivalent, perfect portrait lens, incredible bokeh at point, 0 0.95, beautiful manual focusing, incredibly well dampened, very nice aperture clicks. Doesn't I use this in aperture primary priority mode, which is what I shoot mostly anyway, and I always shoot raw. But it focuses very, very easily with this viewfinder, and there is a magnification option if you really need to dial it in perfectly that's very handy. I mean, I could make a case for buying one of these bodies, this viewfinder, and this lens, which sells new for under $200 um, as a just like this and not even have any other lenses because of the unique things you can do that you can't really do on your phone. Um, with a lens that's this bright and has this much bokeh. So I'll leave links and I'll leave descriptive information below. Um, and if you find you're interested in this, I hope you enjoy it. I still use these cameras and especially I use them backpacking, hiking. They're very small, lightweight, and they produce great images. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching.